Hey, my name is Jared Moon and I'm part of a group of underground athletes you've probably never even heard of before. We don't rely on fancy equipment for training and most of us don't even have gym memberships. In fact, our motivation comes from within. You see, we have jobs, families, and responsibilities, but we still have big goals and they aren't getting achieved at a global gym. For that reason, we have to do things differently. Our training has to be smarter. We don't have every piece of equipment known to man or a ton of time to train, and we don't need it because we are achieving amazing things without it. So how do we do it? If you ask your average personal trainer or gym goer, they'd call us crazy. Yet we're seeing results better than most every single day. And it's happening by blending mental training with physical training and becoming an athlete. What we call, and welcome to, Garage Gym Athlete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? Hey, how's it going? Joe's freezing in San Diego. So just my hands. We can all just make yes, fun. Yes, guys, everybody should be sorry for me <laughs> because I'm very cold in San Diego. <laughs> and then we have Sandy Clark. Sandy, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pumped to uh, get chatting. I've been following you on Instagram. I love uh, all your posts and, you know, keeping it motivational and, uh, you know, having fun with some of our meet yourself Saturday workouts and everything. So I want to hear a lot more about it and your story, your garage and everything. So how about you kick, kick us off with just some, you know, intro background, what you do for a living, all that good stuff. Okay. Well, I am 43. I live in North Dakota and I'm a stay at home mom right now. I'm getting ready to go back to school for my master's actually, because both my kids are in school now. And yeah, we, the whole reason I started a garage gym was because we moved to North Dakota and there's nothing <laughs> Right. <laughs> it, it, it's pretty empty and uh, there actually isn't any time fitness in our town but there's no child care so I had to kind of be That's creative right, yeah. and start a garage gym yeah so I, I I'm curious then what do you do in your garage um, when you have the kiddos and how old are your kids my kids are five and 12. So now okay. they're both in school. Um, what I did when the younger one wasn't in school was I just waited for her to nap and I took the baby monitor downstairs with me to the gym and she just slept Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm always curious because yeah. we, we kind of have that, uh, that struggle as well. You know, I have three kids like when, when can I fit it in? When can Emily fit it in? You know, all that stuff. So we have that. We plan a lot of the nap game, if you will. <laughs> a lot yeah. of the, yeah. that's, that's, uh, good with the, the young ones. Uh, so yeah. what, what, what got you, how long have you been in North Dakota? We've been in North Dakota since 2015. So three years basically now. Okay. And, uh, I'm guessing your husband's job Yes, we were in Iowa before that, and he got a job up here in 2013, and I was pregnant at the time, so we didn't really move, but um, prior to that, yeah, we were in Iowa, and then we just sold the house and moved up here. Nice. So what is the weather like in North Dakota? Not friendly. It's, it's, <laughs> not, it's not nice. It is brutal for about eight months out of the year, and I, I have no sympathy for San Diego. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. It, we had snow the last day of summer this year in wow. September. That's, yeah, that's it's, it, so what are you doing? Kind of crazy. Warm? Are you actually in your garage or is it a space in your house? What, where are you training? No, it actually is a garage. We have a garage heater for when it gets really bad, but I find that the garage heater actually is too much. So I usually turn it on before I go downstairs and then turn it off when I start working out. Cause it's just, it gets too hot otherwise. Hmm. Yeah. Do you hear that Joe? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You are very acclimated to the cold, I take it. Um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Nobody up here wears a coat until the temperature goes below zero. And then everybody's like, okay, I guess maybe I'll wear a winter coat. So you know, it's like sweatshirt weather today. It's in the it's in the low thirties and everybody's in sweatshirts. But that's just the way it is up here. That's awesome. Where did you where did you grow up? What kind of weather were you used to before uh hitting the North Dakota cold? I grew up in Milwaukee, so we were used to snow and cold, but not like this. The temperature here is below zero for months on end, and the wind chill easily is like 50 below zero in the winter, and people don't care. It's just what's normal up here. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, Joe, I don't know, man. You like uh, rack the brain. Is this the, the coldest uh, garage gym athlete we've had on the podcast? It has to be. I think we had somebody from South Dakota. I think uh, Chris is from South Dakota, but no, nah, I think this one you might win. Yeah, I think you you officially take the coldest garage gym athlete 
AKA no excuses. Uh, that's, right. that's awesome. So uh, tell me a little bit more about your setup. You said it's an actual garage. You have a heater in there. But what kind of equipment do you have and, and how big is the space? You know, I don't know how big it is. Basically we can fit a pickup truck in there if there was no gym in there. So it's about that size, you know, about the length of a pickup truck. Um, and we have, you know, we have a treadmill in there. We have a squat rack. We have barbell dumbbells. I have a sandbag. Um, and I just found that, you know, we don't have the length in the, in the garage to do a lot of things like walking lunges and stuff. But when you're in an apartment building and you're the manager, you just use the hall, you know, and people don't care. They're just like, Hey Sandy, what's going on? I'm like, ah, doing lunges today. You know, <laughs> it's just, you just make it happen somehow. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so you said that you started primarily because it just wasn't really any other options, right? Like, uh, yeah. So tell me a little bit more about that and what really like, how did, how did you, because I think some people would be scared to, to start, uh, working out in their garage and stuff. So what, what was that conversation like, uh, you know, maybe with your husband and moving into actually knocking it out, buying the equipment, uh, that whole process. You know, it was actually kind of terrifying because in Iowa, we were uh, members of a gym and I actually was an instructor there. And so I was used to going to a gym and being part of a group and having that for some motivation, in, you know, and it was like, you always just, you went to the gym and that's, that was it. And then we moved up here and my husband works in the oil field and his schedule is crazy. And I was like, I can't even plan to go to a gym early in the morning before the kids wake up. So I'm going to have to do it here. And so I kind of, I waited for him to come home from work one day and I was like, I need some dumbbells. And he was like, okay okay you know and he didn't really work out at the time so he was just like yeah whatever and I'm like I'm gonna get the adjustable kind you know so we don't have to have a ton of them and he's like all right and so that was like the first six or seven months up here was just me a treadmill and dumbbells and I just was trying to figure out how to make this happen um and then what ended up happening was somebody sold their bar their barbell and all of their plates on Craigslist and I was like sweet you know and so I talked him down a little bit in price and you know I was like you're gonna make me haul it like three cities you know I you know cut me a deal. He was like, all right, whatever. So that's how we got our barbell. And then my husband actually decided to start working out and suddenly a squat rack was important. <laughs> was like, it wasn't quite that important. So he was like, Oh, now I see, you know, what's going on. And so then we bought the squat rack and little by little, we've just been adding to it. And actually the sandbag was the last thing that I bought. And my husband was like, let me get this straight. You bought a bag of sand at the hardware store to put in another sandbag. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, <laughs> okay, okay. You know, but it just, I can, I can kind of convince him. He sees it and he knows that this is something that I just love doing. And you know, it, it, I just, I had to find a way. I knew that I wasn't going to stop working out, you know, but I also knew that it was too cold here to just go outside all the time. So I was like, this has to work somehow. This has to work. And the garage suddenly did not become a garage. It just became a gym. It is the gym now. I love that. I love the mindset and the, just the whole idea behind that. You know, you're going to, I think that is like the garage gym athlete mindset. And honestly, like you're going to get it done no matter what you just have to yep. have to do that. So, uh, you know, what are some of your goals right now in, in training in your garage? You know, Honestly, now my goals have changed a lot. When I first started working out up in North Dakota, I was like, I am going to squat a massive amount of weight. I am going to bench press, you know, like who knows what. And that was my goal when I first started. And I did like the strong list program and things like that. And I was doing really well for a while. You know, I could squat more than my body weight. I was benching my body weight, you know, and these things I was just like, this is great. But that got old. It got really old to the point where I I think it's great when people can chase a number when they're like, I want to get higher and higher in these things. But for me, I was just like, I don't really care if I can squat anymore. You know, I want to be strong. I want to be fit, but I don't really care if I'm squatting 200 pounds. So I've kind of changed it a little bit more to functional fitness now. And honestly, some of my goals are a little bit selfish, aesthetically selfish. Like I'm, I, I just want to see my abs. I'm sorry. But I just want to see them. They're, they're there. I can feel them. But I'm like, you need to just come out. You need to come out now because I, that, that's my goal. And to do a pull-up, a strict pull-up. That's what I want to do. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Now, there's nothing wrong with uh, wanting to see some abs uh, pop out there. That, that, that's really cool. Um, so how did you transition? So you said you were a fitness instructor when you lived in Iowa. Is that right? Yep. Yep. And so was that, was that less functional fitness back then? Was that, uh, what were you doing then? Well, I taught two specific classes. One was a barbell strength training class and it, it's like set to music, you know, so it's a little bit more about more reps, less weight, but it still was a great workout. And I know I gained a lot of strength um, teaching that class. 
And then I taught another class that was a little more freestyle and it was kind of like hit cardio with strength training and stretching and everything like that. But those were nothing like what I do up here. I mean, up here, it's like, I'm focused more on just building strength and you know, there's no music because who cares? I mean, there's music, but it's not like I have to work out to the music, you know? So it was, it was a change and I missed the people, but I think it was really good because suddenly I was like, okay, there's nobody here but me. So I am my cheerleader. I am the person that has to push myself. And suddenly that gave a whole new, you know, a whole new spin to my workouts. And I like it that way. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's uh, you know, if you, I think, I don't know if it, it can, it, it, there's a big debate like in leader in the leadership world, like is, uh, can it be taught or are you born with it? I'm starting to wonder that about garage gym athletes, like that, that internal motivation and desire to succeed. And like what, with a community, without a community, like, is it just born in us or, you know, is it something that we've had to pick up over the years? And I love uh, talking to, to athletes to, to learn more about that. So having said that, there's definitely always a struggle involved with getting in the gym or time or intensity or consistency, something, where do you feel that you struggle most and how do you overcome that? It, it kind of varies during the year. Like in the summer, we have like 17 hours of daylight and I think I could work out all day. I could get up and like go running and lift some weights and take a walk and do everything. So in the winter, I think the cold weather, even working out inside, you know, the cold weather just kind of makes it like, do I really want to do this? You know, it's dark outside and nothing feels good. And I just, you know, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with winter. I'm done with snow. I'm done with ice. So I think that kind of is a struggle. And sometimes, honestly, I feel like things just get too crazy as a mom, especially, you know, I'm just like, okay, I've got kids doing stuff with school. We've got church stuff going on. We've got this going on. And I just, some days I'm like, I would like to take a nap. You know, I don't <laughs> want to lift weights. I want to take a nap, but there's just something I, I don't know. There's just something in my head that says, just go do it. You know? And a lot of times that's what I do. I'm like, just go do 20 minutes, 20 minutes and you can be done. And you get down there and you do your 20 minutes and suddenly you're like, that wasn't that bad. Let's just do the hour. And you know, and then I get to an hour and I'm like, okay, I could probably do more, but let's just call it a day and I'll save some of this for tomorrow. So I don't really struggle. I don't think I struggle with, you know, trying to get it done. Sometimes it's just those mental games that your head plays that they're like, no, just take a nap, take a shower, take a bath, you know? And you're like, okay, no, let's do that after, you know? And it just, it, it happens. I think it's something that you just, you, you start to do more regularly and it becomes just part of you. And then it's, it's just part of my day. I just go and, you know, I do it and it's done and it's great. I, I like that tactic, you know, I, whether intentional or unintentional, you're like, all right, you know, I don't feel like doing it today, but let's just, let's go get in 10 or 20 minutes, you know, and then it's yep. like, oh, okay, well, yep. let's, yeah, you know, that wasn't that bad. And I think that that's a, an awesome way to get started, especially if you have a garage gym, if someone, if anyone out there is ever like struggling, just try and make that little deal with yourself. I know it's worked with me a lot of times as I'm like, all right, I don't have a lot of time. I'm just going to, yeah, maybe I'll knock out something for 15 minutes. By the time I go up there and stretch and warm up, I'm like, all right, you know, let's, we're just yeah. going to do the whole thing. So many people have said to me, they're like, well, how do you know what to do? You know, don't you get bored? How do you find a program? What are you doing? And I'm like, don't worry about that. Just go and do something. You know, it doesn't matter if you're just doing push-ups, if you're doing jumping jacks, if you're doing, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing in your garage is better than sitting on your couch in your house. You know, you're doing something and it's going to make a difference. You know, you might not be doing the strong lift program and like building strength in a month or something, but you're doing something to make yourself better. And that's, that's my garage gym, you know, idea is just make myself better. I'm a better mom if I'm taking care of myself. And I know I'm a better wife if I'm taking care of myself. I'm just a better person because I get really grouchy if I don't work out and then <laughs> nobody wants to deal with me. I'm the same exact way. That's uh, yeah, that. If I don't work out, that's, it's a problem for everybody. And uh, so I just, really need, just need to go make sure that I get that done. All right. So I yeah. want to hear a little bit more about the, the family. So you have two kids, you're married. Um, you're, sounds like you got your husband into fitness through garage gym training, which is really cool. Are your kids involved at all? Do they watch you? How, how does that work? Yeah, they, my son actually ran cross country and he's still in elementary school, but they had a cross country program and he does karate and they're both. I'm, I'm trying to keep them away from real structured stuff because it seems like structured sports are getting too important too early for kids, yeah. in my opinion. You know, I just, I don't want them being like, well, I have to go and play on a team and we have to play games and we have to win and we have to travel when they're 12 years old. I'd rather, like my son with karate, you know, he does that. He loves it. And it's not so much a, you have to do this. He wants to do it. And with my daughter, I've noticed that, you know, she's only five. 
but she, she's watching. And there are times when she'll come downstairs with me and she'll be like, can I just watch you? And I'll catch her watching me. And she's just, she's just picking up on that stuff. And, you know, she's, she's still too young to, you know, try to get her into too much stuff, but she'll do things with me. She tries to do push ups, and, you know, she'll, she gets involved. And I'm, I, that's what I want from them is I just want them to see me doing it and see that it makes me not only a healthier person, but a happier person. And somehow maybe they can incorporate it because I waited too late in my life to actually do it. You know, I was active as a teenager and then in college, but then life takes over and you're kind of like, okay, no, I'm just going to sit on the couch and I'm going to go out this weekend, you know, and not really be active. And that creates a load of problems. So I want them to be healthy all the time, you know, and not have to think about it throughout their life, that it's just part of their life and that they just, that they don't see it as work because I don't see it as work anymore. I just see it as something I do, you know, something I enjoy doing. And that's what I'm, what I'm hoping they'll, you know, get to, get to how, how they'll grow to see it. That's very cool. Very cool. All right. So I, uh, how do you like training in your garage versus having been in gyms previously and everything? How do you like training there? They both have their, their pros and cons. They really do. I sometimes really miss people, especially being up here. I mean, we are literally closer to Canada than we are to Montana. You know, and I live in a town. Yeah, I live in a town of like a thousand people. So, you know, there's and the next closest town is probably, you know, 15 miles away. You know, so it's, it's pretty secluded. And so sometimes I miss the people and I catch myself talking to myself in the garage. And I'm thinking the neighbors probably think I've lost my mind. You know, I'm down there like, come on, Sandy, you can do it. But um, so I miss that sometimes. I miss the, the people aspect. But, you know, there's nobody to blame in your garage gym if nobody puts the weights away except you or your husband you know or there's nobody to say you know stop curling in the squat rack you know it's it's nice to have that space that's just for us you know and i i like that and i like it now more that that i've gotten accustomed to it and i can push myself you know that i rely more on myself for that intrinsic motivation because before it was a lot of people you know even as a as an instructor I would get up there and some days I was just like, I'm not feeling this, you know, but you get in that group setting and they push you, everybody's pushing each other. And it's, it's a great environment. I love them both, but you know, this has just become my norm. And so now it's this, this is just, I, I love it. I think it's great. And I find so many different ways to do things. You know, I mean, like I said, I do walking lunges in the, you know, in the hallways and we've just bought a house and there's a nice dirt alley behind the house. I'm like, that's where I'm going to be doing my walking lunges and my bear crawls. And I don't care what the neighbors think because Maybe they'll join me. It'll be great. <laughs> That's really cool. Now I want to ask, you know, you've been training in your garage for a while. I know you're someone who likes to push yourself. So what is the hardest workout you've ever done? You know, I read this question and I've been thinking about it. And I actually, I read a lot about metabolic resistance training about a year ago. And I was like, that's really cool. That's something I want to do. And so I was looking at all these like workouts online and, you know, I do a couple of them. And I'm like, you know what? I bet you I can write one. And so I did. And you, it, as, a, as a previous instructor, when you look at something on paper, it looks great. And you're like, that is an awesome workout. And then you do it and you're like, what the hell was I thinking? You know, because <laughs> I about killed myself. I really did. I laid on the garage floor when I was done, you know, and I had things in there like power cleans and hang cleans and pull-ups and push-ups and squats and all sorts of stuff. And I laid on the garage floor and I was like, I'm going to throw up and I'm going to have to clean it up on this floor, you know? And I was like, <laughs> go upstairs to your apartment and puke in the toilet, you know? And I was like, no, I can't, I couldn't move for like 20 minutes. I just laid there like gasping for air. And I was like, I about killed myself with my own workout. It was crazy. It was hard, but it was great. I haven't done it again since I, I'm, I'm scared of it. I'm like, no, no, not again. <laughs> that could be like a birthday workout. You do what, you know, every year on your birthday or something like that and, and, and benchmark yeah. yourself. It's been a year. It actually came up in my, in my Instagram memories or my time hop memories or something. I was like, Oh my gosh, I remember that. It was just awful, but it was hard, but it was good. You know, and I didn't throw up, you know, <laughs> after I was, after I was standing on my two feet again, I was like, and eh, I wasn't that bad, but thinking back, I'm like, yeah, that was, that was bad. That was bad. It was tough. That's great. That, that's how the hard workouts are after, after the fact. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know what? It wasn't too bad, but during is a different story. All right. Yeah, opinion, yeah. What's the best activity for building mental toughness? You know, I think that varies and I think it changes, you know, as time goes on, as your goals change, as your environment changes, as you know, your life changes in general. Um, I think, I think you have to find something you want that you haven't gotten yet, you know, and for me, it's, it's pull-ups, you know, and I go downstairs and I look at that pull-up bar and I'm just like, 
you know what today is? Today is negative pull-ups and I hate them. And I don't want to do another negative pull-up because I just want to do a strict pull-up without assistance. But I know that as long as I keep doing these, I'm going to eventually get it. And that's how I do it. I'm like, someday I'm going to jump up to that bar and I'm not going to need momentum and it's going to happen. And I'm going to throw a party and life is going to be fabulous. <laughs> but you know, it's until I get to that point, it's like, I know that I have to put in the grunt work and the ugly work and the stuff that doesn't look cool. Nobody wants to watch you doing negative pull-ups. You know, if I can jump up there and bust out 20 strict pull-ups, people are going to be like, wow, look at her. She's cool. Get up there and do some negatives. They're like, what the heck is that? You know, that's not exciting. You know, and so it's like, you have to do the ugly work to get to the, to, to the good stuff, to the stuff you want. And I think for me, that works for mental toughness. Cause I'm like, this is not fun. You know, this is not what I want, but I know this is going to get there. And when you can push yourself through the ugly stuff, the stuff that isn't fun, it makes that achieving that goal that much better. It just, it, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I'm going to get on Instagram and like do a live. It'll be my first live. I'll be like, guess what? I can do pull-ups and now you're all going to watch, you know, and it's just going to be fun. It's going to be great. Well, then I'll you be have there. to do it again on the lives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pressure's on. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll yeah. be there to watch it. Uh, so you, you definitely, so. definitely go live when you, uh, when you get it. Now, if you can only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, hands down, it would be a weighted vest. And I don't even own one yet, but it would be a weighted vest because everything else you can, you can create, you can make, you can, you, can, you can go cut down a tree to do bench presses with, you know, you can squat anything, rocks, you know, you could, and for a weighted vest, you know, you can put rocks in your pockets, but how much how, how cool is that gonna be it's not but i think that i could honestly handle doing body weight exercises the rest of my life if i had a weighted vest because then there's that progressive overload for the rest of your life and you can keep adding to it you throw rocks in the pockets and that's my next piece of equipment it's it's on my amazon wish list it's gonna happen but um i think that that would be it because everything else i could replicate but i think the weighted vest would make that progressive overload with body weight so much easier yeah, I think uh, a weighted vest. I'm trying to think. This is the first time we had that on there. Yeah, that's. A, I, it, but I think it's such a good answer. I love my vest. In fact, I have to get a new one because I have so much love for it. It's like getting holes <laughs> in it and breaking down a little bit. But uh, I'm a huge uh, weighted vest fan. Yeah, I've been looking at them, and you know, you can find them pretty cheap. But I've been looking at the differences, and you know, whether you want ore weights or you want little sand eggs, I'm like. If I'm going to buy this, I'm going to get what I want and I'm going to make sure that it's comfortable. You know, I'm not a very tall person. I'm like five, two and a half or something like that. And so I don't want it to be like down on my hips and uncomfortable so that I don't use it. So I'm like, well, you know, I'm just going to, you know, feel this out and see what happens. But they're not cheap. When you start looking at the good ones, they can get a little pricey. So. Oh, yeah, for Quality sure. Quality makes a big difference in those, I've noticed, because I've used some yeah. random ones at other CrossFit gyms, but then I got my own, which is the same one uh, Jared has. And, uh, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, well, that, that justifies it. So I'm going to tell my husband that, you know, it is, it, it is been set in stone that we have to buy the expensive one. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> So uh, you already have a pretty good setup to your gym, but if you could add uh, one thing to it, no, no cost equated to it, uh, what, what would it be? Hmm. Maybe a rower. There's a lot oh, of things yeah. with rowing that, that would be awesome. And, you know, we have like the, the rowing thing on the squat rack, but that just is not the same. It's, it's not the same as a rower. I think we'd add a rower if we, you know, if we could afford that. Definitely. Yeah, it's definitely high up there. Awesome. Now, there are a lot of garage gym athletes listening to this, training alone, training in their garages, uh, maybe even listening to this during their warm-up. So what would the best advice you have for garage gym athletes out there be? Just do something, something. It does not matter what. If you, like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, if you just go down there and, you know, do some push-ups or do some pull-ups or, you know, do some squat, just do something. Because once you actually get started doing it, it's going to happen. You're going to want to keep doing it. And that's what I have to do, especially when I forget to turn the heater on and I go downstairs and I'm like, okay, it's minus 15 outside and the garage is about zero. You know, and I'm like this, no, this isn't happening. But if I say just start, once you start, it, it just falls into place, you know, and that's, that's for everybody, you know, but especially for a garage gym athlete, because a lot of times you're on your own, um, you know, just do it, just do something and the rest will fall into place. Awesome. I love it, Sandy. Well, I really appreciate you being on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. It's been a blast and uh, thank you so much for your time. 
Thank you for having me. This was this was exciting. I've been so excited for days. <laughs> I've been waiting. I'm like, yes, this is gonna be cool. Yeah, I'm glad that uh, we finally got you on. Uh, thanks again. Thank you.